In this video, I'm going to introduce you about hyperkinetic dysarthria. Hyper means increased or excess, and kinetic means movement, so hyperkinetic means too much movement. Don't get it mixed up with hypokinetic. Hypokinetic means too little movement. Hyperkinetic dysarthria means the patient has excessive movements of the speech apparatus. The extra compulsive movements are not only socially unacceptable, but can be very devastating for the patient. For patients with hyperkinetic dysarthria, their speech production ability is often normal. They have the ability to make those speech sounds, but they have to deal with the extra compulsive movements. There can be a number of possible causes for hyperkinetic dysarthria. Probably the most famous one would be the Huntington disease. Huntington's disease is a horrible genetic disease. Tardive dyskinesia is caused by long-term use of neuroleptic drugs, which are used to treat psychiatric conditions. Tourette's syndrome is another one. It's believed that the main characteristic of Tourette's is cursing and swearing. In fact, that aspect is really exaggerated. It's not the most common aspect. Let's talk about the mechanisms of hyperkinetic dysarthria. Hyperkinetic dysarthria is caused by the damage to the basal ganglia, a group of deep structures in the brain. It's not fully understood how all these movement disorders occur from the basal ganglia. The control circuits in this area are very complicated. Some of them suppress movements and some of them excite movements. One theory suggests that when the different neurotransmitters are not balanced, it can result in excessive movements. When the excessive movements affect the speech, then it's hyperkinetic dysarthria. Several hyperkinetic movement disorders can lead to hyperkinetic dysarthria. Here are some examples of hyperkinetic movement disorders. Chorea is often described as dance-like because it appears to be smooth and coordinated, but they are actually unpredictable and purposeless. It can be found in cases of many medical conditions. Pseudonyms chorea Huntington's disease, stroke, tardive dyskinesia, cerebral anoxia, and carbon monoxide poisoning. Here is an example of a patient with tardive disease. He tried to speak and eat his meals, but the involuntary jaw and facial movements interfered his speech or eating. Almighty, enough for one person, one meal. Chorea can affect many different muscle groups. The voluntary movement of all the muscles are susceptible to interference from the involuntary movements, so all of the processes of speech are affected. This is in contrast to other dysarthria where one or two processes are primarily affected. Chorea affects prosody more than any other component of speech production. The two prosodic errors most evident are prolonged intervals and variable rate of speech. These errors are caused by the unpredictable timing of the choreic movements. For example, an individual may wait for the completion of an interfering choreic motion, and this would cause a prolonged interval between syllables or words. If an individual hurry through an utterance before the next choreic movement occurs, this can cause a variable rate of speech. Myoclonus is distinguished by involuntary and brief contractions of a part or a whole or a group of muscles in the same area of the body. The contractions may occur singly or in repeating irregular pattern or rhythmically. Myoclonus can be found in cases of many medical conditions. 
such as kidney failure, epilepsy, anoxia, strokes, and TBI. A tick is a little different from the compulsory movements described previously. It is a rapid movement that can be controlled voluntarily for a certain period of time, but is eventually performed because of compulsive desire to do so. There are motor and vocal tics. Examples of motor tics include eye blinking and complex hand gestures and body movements, like jumping, kicking. Examples of vocal tics include throat clearing and shouting. Multiple motor and vocal tics are one of the four clinical features of Tourette syndrome. Here is an example of a patient with Tourette syndrome. You can see both motor and vocal tics when he was talking. People need to know that we're all one, and we're all together. We're we're just the same as everyone else, basically. And so, essential tremor, also known as organic tremor or familiar tremor. Is a progressive neurological disorder. The most recognizable feature is a tremor of the arm or hands that is apparent during voluntary movements, such as eating and writing. It is also the most common hyperkinetic movement disorder. Essential voice tremor occurs in about 20% of the individuals with essential tremor. It is characterized by a tremulous, shaky vocal quality caused by involuntary contractions of the vocal folds and vertical laryngeal movements. In mild cases, the tremor is evident only during a prolonged vowel, but in severe cases, the tremor may slow down the speech. Dystonia is a hyperkinetic movement disorder of muscle tone. Dystonia causes involuntary, prolonged muscle contractions that interfere with normal movements or postures. Dystonic movements are typically slower and more sustained than those in chorea. Dystonia can result from numerous conditions. In some disorders, dystonia is the primary symptom. Here are a list of examples. Oral mandibular dystonia is a primary dystonia that can affect the jaw, lips, or tongue muscles. Spasmodic torticollis is characterized by intermittent dysphonic contractions of the neck muscles. It results in an involuntary turning of the head. In drug-induced dystonia, or known as tardive dystonia, contractions appear near mouth. And face. Major syndrome is a rare idiopathic disease. It is characterized by repetitive eye blinking and abnormal facial movement. It appears in early middle age and gets progressively worse, and eventually the patient loses functional vision. Spasmodic dysphonia is characterized by involuntary vocal fold movements during phonation. It is expressed as adductor vocal folds, giving a strained and tight voice quality, or abductor vocal folds, giving a breathy voice or a phonia. Dystonia has more errors of articulation, such as imprecise consonants, distorted vowels, and irregular articulatory breakdown. And chorea displays more prosodic errors than those with dystonia. Some evaluation tasks are very helpful in identifying hyperkinetic dysarthria. First is observation. SLPs need to carefully observe the associated involuntary movements because each hyperkinetic disorder has its own general patterns. Second, vowel prolongation. Can be used to detect harsh or strained strangle vocal quality that present in some hyperkinetic dysarthrias. Third, conversational speech and having the patient read aloud can provide a comprehensive picture of the speech, including articulation, prosody, phonation, and respiration. Fourth, it's suggested that alternate motion rates (AMRs) can highlight. The irregular articulatory breakdowns and speech rate variations. What are the treatments for hyperkinetic dysarthria? 
Treatments for hyperkinetic dysarthria is mostly medication that suppress the involuntary movements. Among them, the most successful medication for hyperkinetic disorder is Botox injections. Behavioral treatments vary across diseases. Here is a look at some of the behavioral treatments. For Huntington's disease, in the early stages, the clinician usually has little to do because the patient's speech is still quite intelligible. In the middle stages of Huntington's disease, patients often rush to complete their utterances before a choreic movement interrupts it. SLPs could work with patients on rate control, rhythmic breathing, and relaxation to increase intelligibility. In the late stage, the patient may be restricted to single-word utterances. Low-tech AAC device will be appropriate because it does not require new learning. For patients with dystonia, it is recommended the clinician find and use sensory tricks that can suppress their involuntary movements. But sensory tricks seldom have long-term effectiveness and they don't work for every patient. Bite blocks are commonly used by dentists to comfortably stabilize the jaw. They are helpful in case of dystonic jaw closure, jaw deviation, or jaw retraction. Patients can bite down on the blocks as needed for conversation or drinking liquids. Using easy onset, the patient will be asked to first exhale while producing a sigh. Once the soft sighs are produced consistently, the patient will be asked to produce a prolonged R. This exercise is to have the patient make softer glottal closure while phonating. Behavioral treatments for tics attempt to break the stress release cycle in the patient. The habit reversal training is a procedure teaching individuals to use competing behaviors to prevent or interrupt tics. For example, if a patient has eye blink tics, the patient will be asked to voluntarily blink slowly before the tic occurs. With relaxation therapy, the patient learns to move through a series of progressive muscle relaxation exercises whenever they feel an urge to tic. And the exposure response prevention teaches individuals to resist and tolerate the urges of tics and consciously suppressing it. Here is the end of this video. I've introduced the mechanism, causes, speech features, evaluation, and treatments for hyperkinetic dysarthria. Thanks for listening.